Yes, hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Sa ating mga kakriminolohiya dyan, magandang hapon po sa inyo. And for today's discussion, we'll focus on our Q&A edition. So, our Q&A edition po, yung mga questions po na nakikita ko in our social media accounts na probably connected po sa ating pag-aaral as criminology, try to have some videos, discussions regarding with that question. Let's start. First question for for this afternoon is this question. So I just have hidden the um, name of that person for his or her. So to hide his identity. So let's start. The first question that been one of our criminologia is: If you are the fire investigator, what would be your judgment if there are two or more fires which started at the same time and at the same area. Right? Okay? Okay. So, if we'll tell, if we ans- if we'll go into answer this question, in question po nito is connected with our fire technology and especially in our arson investigation topics. And, we can answer this question if we look into the prima facie evidence of Maramit tayo prima facie evidence of arson. First of it is our first of our prima facie evidence is fire started simultaneously. Substantial amount of flammable substance or materials are stored within the building not necessary in the business. Ito po yung sinasabi ko. If ever um, your business is about school supplies, right? Your business nyo po is school supply. And then, after investigation, nakita, nag-store kayo ng 100 liters of flammable substance. And that 100 liters of flammable substance, it's hindi naman po siya necessary for your school supply business. So, necessary po siya. So, if ever ganyan, probably po, there's a prima facie evidence of arson. Next, gasoline, kerosene, petroleum, or other flammable or combustible material are found in the ruins or premises of the burned building or property. May mga gasoline trucks po tayo, may mga kerosene um, ruins po tayo, petroleum, ganun, mga, mga accelerants po, then possibly pong may prima facie evidence. Pang-apat, building or property is insured for substantially more than the actual value of the time at the time of the issuance of the policy. Sabihin na natin, yung bahay mo is worth 5 million. But what do you do is you insured your house worth 7 million, 8 million, 10 million. So preferably, if nasunog yung bahay, there's a prima facie evidence that there's arson exists kasi the insurance claim would that, right? Okay, numbers or the next is this is the answer into the questions of our fellow criminologia. If more than two fires have occurred in the same uh, or in other premises owned by the offender or in the control of the offender or the insured, and then there's a prima facie evidence. So, followed here, if shortly before the fire, substantial portion yung mga yung mga insured na mga parts sa ba, sa bahay natin yung mga mamahaling parte ng ating property yung ating sabihin na natin you have uh, paintings worth 3 million you have base worth 5 million ganun yung mga yung mamamahali natin ng mga property and then suddenly hindi hindi mo talaga inaalis diyan sa pag sa nilalag sa sa kinalalagyan niya but sad to said tinanggal mo and then automatically there's fire exists and then probably po may may prima facie evidence po ng arson niya right kasi yung 5 million painting mo hindi mo talaga inaalis diyan and then suddenly what happened is biglang bigla kan big, bigla mo na lang inalis and then automatically may sunog na nangyari so there could be probably and there's a good indicator that there's a prima facie evidence of so right alon if a demand for money 
or other valuable consideration was made before the farm by mga extortion po na nangyayari, right? If you will not give the certain amount, your property will be born, and then that's a prima facie evidence that there's arson really. Followed here is our next question. Ano po ba talaga ang nauna? Which came or which came first? Law or crime? Okay, common po talaga itong tanong na to kasi napakarami talaga ang nagtatanong nito. San, ano po talaga ang nauna? Batas o ang remen? We'll answer that using this principle. The principle of nola fiona siniligi. According to the nola fiona siniligi, this principle requires that no punishment be carried out unless done in accordance with the law. Or it is also under with the principle of nolum cremen, nola fiona siniligi. There is no crime when there is no law punishing. Right? And it's also stated and um, cited from the book or from the article of Nolam Cremen, Nola Fiona Siniligi. Article po yan. So, cited po talaga tayo. Right? Okay? So, hindi po talaga pwedeng nauna yung Cremen. Pagkatapos mo, pagkatapos na nagawa na ang Cremen, gagawin mo ang batas. Hindi naman po yan na nangyayari. Right? Example, pagdihin natin. Cybercrime. Cybercrime. Sa panahon na natin na wala pang internet, may cybercrime na ba? Wala pa, right? Kasi wala pang internet. Sa kapanahon na, na meron ng internet, pero hindi pa necessary o hindi pa nadidefine yung mga acts of cybercrime, wala pang cybercrime, right? Hindi pa. Yung if nag-upload ka ng video sa internet, sex scandal video sa internet, and then automatically, wala pang cybercrime, you are not liable, right? But, but by this time, we have cybercrime, and then you are now liable. Right? Okay, isa din yan. Sabihin na natin, um, during this COVID-19, okay, this COVID-19 pandemic or crisis, pinaka-common talaga na nangyayaw, uh, pinaka-common ngayon is, bawal lumabas, those, uh, bawal po lumabas yung mga bata nag-iidad ng 18 years old below or 21 years old below. Right? 21 years old below. Ngayon, may bagong memorandum po yung IETF natin na pwede na po yung 15 years old below na lang ang bawal lumabas. So, considering with that concern, prior to that uh, enactment of that rules and regulations by our IETF, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, binabawalan po bang lumabas yung mga tao? Technically, hindi po. But after the enactment of that, 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 that IETF memorandum or that order of IETF, bawal na pong lumabas yung mga taong nag ng 15 years old pababa to 21 years old pababa. Ayun, sabihin natin, saan ang nauna? Nauna po ba yung uh, crime? Kasi uh, crime? O nauna po ba yung definition of the law? And remember, I would like also to highlight this one, that the definition of a crime, it is an act or omission punishable by law. By mere definition of it, it says that crime is defined by law. So therefore, Walang krimen kung walang matas. Walang magiging krimen kung walang matas. So therefore, the law should be enacted first before this crime. Right? Okay. So next question. Yes. Ano po ba ang kaibahan ng criminology at criminologist? Okay. So common questions. But we'll answer this one kasi napakarami po talaga nagtatanong pa rin ito. Ano po ba ang kaibahan nila? First is, we should define this one using our recent Law, or shall we say, the Republic Act 11131, or the Philippine Criminology Profession Act of 2018. Ano po bang meron sa batas na ito? First, napakarami po talagang content ng batas ng ito, but we'll focus in these two terms, the criminology and the criminologies. Ano po ba? Okay. Based on section for definition of terms, criminology and registered criminologies po yung dinidefine niya. When we say Criminology. Criminology refers to the scientific study of crimes, criminals, and victims. It is also deals with the prevention and solution of crimes, right? So, criminology po, yun po yung study natin, yun po yung korso natin. We study crimes, we study criminals, we study victim by itself. And also, our study also talks and tackles the prevention and solution of these crimes, right? Yun po yung study natin. 
Yun po yung kulso natin. That's a criminology. But if we'll answer, sir, ako, I am studying criminology. Criminology ba ako? No, you are not criminology. You are a criminology student. Kasi criminology po is yung kulso nyo. Hindi po yung ikaw. Right? Yes. So criminology is a course. Criminology is the study. You are a student studying criminology. Right? Okay. So followed here is registered criminology. Ano ba ang registered criminologist? May kaibahan po ang criminologist to a registered criminology. Okay. First, what is registered criminology? Registered criminologist refers to the natural person. Natural person po siya. Who holds a valid certificate of registration. May certification po siya. At this certification is valid and an updated. Let me have this. The term is updated professional identification card. And this professional identification card states that he or she is a criminal. Kailan mo makukuha ang certificate of registration? You will get the certificate of registration upon passing the board examination. And at the same time, even though you have with you your certificate of registration, if hindi po updated ang yung professional identification card, or shall we say, nag-expire na po yung PRC nyo, TSC can also update that one anytime soon, right? And by updating this, um, this identification card and being a registered criminologist, he can practice profession of being a criminology into his way of life. Right? Yes, po. Followed here is bagong tanong. Pwede bang magpulis kahit hindi ka nagtapos ng criminology? Okay, magandang tanong din yan. Pwede ka bang magpulis kahit hindi ka tapos ng criminology? Yes, pwede po. We could answer that using this Republic 8551. The title of Republic Act 8551 is the Philippine National Police Reform and Reorganization Act of 1998. Okay, so ano bang nasa 8551? In the 8551, napakarami pong section ang nandyan. But, to answer the question kung pwede bang magpulis ang hindi BS Criminology graduate, yes, we focus on Section 14 or Section 30 of Republic Act 6975. But it's amended by 8551, so we focus on Section 14. Ano bang nasa sa Section 14? Section 30, amended, general qualification for appointment. Walang tao na pwedeng i-appoint as officer or member of the Philippine National Police if hindi or if wala sa kanya ang ganitong mga requirements or qualification or prerequisite. First, he or she is a citizen of the Philippines. Dapat po siya ay citizen. In, a, in the Philippines. So, Pinoy po dapat siya. Pangalawa, a person of good moral conduct. Yes po, dapat po yan. Pangatlo, must pass the psychiatric, psychological, drug, and physical test. Remember that the psychiatric, psychological, and drug or physical test should be administered by the Philippine National Police itself. But, in some cases that the Philippine National Police cannot administer the certain the, there's a, this certain test, then the Napulcom can accredited government hospital who can administer this test, right? Okay, next is must possess a formal baccalaureate degree from a recognized institution of learning. Ito po yung sagot sa tanong nyo must possess a, bac a formal baccalaureate degree. When we say baccalaureate degree, it is a BS program or a bachelor's program, right? Napakarami pong bachelor's program natin. First, we have BS Stream, BS CS, BS IT, BS Ed, BE Ed, BS Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor in Tourism, and ano pang mga BS natin, napakarami po niyang may BS in Biology pa po tayo, May BS in na, um, statistics pa tayo. Napakarami po. Pwede palang magpulis po yan. Yes, provided that you are a graduate of baccalaureate degree. And we have, I want to highlight this one. That you graduate of a baccalaureate degree from a recognized institution of learning. 
when we say recognized institution of learning, dapat po this institution or these colleges or this university it's been recognized by the Commission on Higher Education or by the CHED. Kasi if your program doesn't have permit from the CHED, even you will graduate baccalaureate degree, you cannot apply TNP. Right? But if your college or your uh, if your school is recognized by the CHED, then you can practice or you can apply to uh, PNP in the future upon graduation. Hindi lang po automatic na pag-graduate nyo, magiging police na din kayo. No, it doesn't mean. Because you need to be eligible in accordance with the standards set by the commission. Ano po ba yung mga eligibility na sinet, sinet ng commission natin? Nang, nang first is the PRC. Right? PRC. So, PRC or Professional Regulation Commission, if you are a PRC holder or a uh, Professional Regulation Commission holder, and then you can apply PNP. On the other hand, paano po yung mga korso or mga baccalaureate degree na wala pong board exam, they can take the NAPLCOM and Police Entrance Examination. And on the other hand, Pwede din po yung civil service examination, professional examination po. So, pwede po yung mas, uh, masipisa nung tatlo. If you have three of those three, much better po. But requirements na po talaga is isa. Sir, yung BS Criminology po ba, pwede ba pong hindi mo na mag-take ng board exam and mag-take muna po ng NAPLCOM? Yes po, pwede po. On the other hand na lang, doon na lang po kayo mag-take ng Criminologist board exam, police na po kayo. Pwede po yun, right? But much better if you go first with a board exam in criminology para mas hindi na burden pa sa time yung naging polis na kayo and polis ka na and then the other hand, um, nagpo-problema ka pa para, uh, para pumasa sa board exam. And mas maganda po talaga ang criminologist kasi you can have your eligibility in terms with promotion and you can have your eligibility until the rank of police lieutenant colonel, right? Okay. After that, you must not have been dishonorably discharged from military. Bawal po kayong ma-discharge sa military. Pwede pong ma-discharge provided you are honorably. So, nag-resign po kayo, ganun. But if you are been dishonorably discharged, you have been a wool, you have been uh, ano pang ginawa mo doon, uh, you are you have been rejected or dismissed from the service, that's dishonorably po, hindi po pwede 'yan. On the other hand, hindi lang po military employment even civilian position in the government, dapat din po ay hindi kayo na dismiss. Next, must not, must not have been convicted by final judgment of an offense or crime involving moral turpitude. Yes. And the height or the most controversial nowadays is the height by itself. Height which is six, uh, 5'4 or shall we say 1.62 1. meter for male and 5'2 or 157 meter for female. So, may mga, may mga controversial po na, na sa present ngayon kasi may senador po tayo na gusto niyang ipababa or if gusto niyang tanggalin or lessen or to um, babaan po yung height requirements ng PNP natin. Kasi naman po talaga, that height requirements came from our American uh, counterparts. Sa Amerika po, pag magpopulis po kayo, yan po yung height requirements. At sabihin natin sa Amerika, napakataan, napakatangkad po ng mga tao doon. Dito sa Pilipinas po, problema at issue po yan. Right? Okay. Followed here is BMI po, yung BMI natin. You should not be less, more or less than 5 kilograms from your standard weight corresponding to your height, age, and sex. MI po yan. Dapat hindi po kayo more or less than 5 kilos. For new applicants po, you should be at least 21 years of age. But you should not be more than 30 years of age. So in any cases po, pwede po bang mag-apply? Wala ka dun sa mga edad na yon. Yes, pwede po. Provided that you will get age waiver from the National Police Commission. Same din po yung sa height you can have with you your height waiver, right? Okay? So, our next question here is, examination of firearms is confiscated during police operation. Mandatory po ba na i-examine natin? 
provisionary po, magdepende po kung kailan nyo lang gusto. B, both E and C, and D, none of all. Okay? So, thank you for that question. Sasagutin natin yan using this memorandum cellular by the Directorate for Investigation and Detection Management. Kam -kam Krami po siya. Ang nandito po is mandatory examination of all firearms, shells, slugs recovered during police operation. Mandatory po according to this memorandum. Yes? Okay. And bakit po? Kasi nung unang kapanahon or even prior to this memorandum, ang mga PNP field investigator natin, after na-confiscate nila yung firearms, eh, hindi nila pinoforward for crime laboratory for examination. Except if needed po nila ng firearms examination. Right? But on the present time, our PNP crime laboratory, right? Let me clarify this one, that PNP crime lab and PNP SOCO is different. Different po kasi hindi po pwedeng sabihin mo, punta ka ng PNP SOCO. PNP SOCO is not the office. PNP SOCO is just the operation. The operation administer or perform by our, by our PNP crime laboratory personnel. Right? Yes po. So ano bang tawag sa opisina nila? You should name or you should call their name PNP Crime Laboratory. Right? Yes. Hindi po sila PNP SOCO. PNP Crime Laboratory. Yung SOCO po, yun yung operation na ginagawa nila in responding to a crime scene. Right? Ang PNP, so, ang PNP Crime Laboratory po natin ngayon, acquired, recently acquired Integrated Ballistics Identification System or what we call IBIS. IBIS. Ano po ba ang nasa IBIS? IBIS its purpose is to have a ballistics crime database. Right? Data from ballistics evidence gathered from the crime scene and other pa na nangangaanan. It involves ballistics evidence, firearms investigation, automatically po ina-upload nila. They, are, they, they will take a digital image of these firearms or these shots, these slugs and these shells recovered from the crime scene or any police operations and automatically they will upload this into our or into the newly acquired IDs. Ano po ba ang ma, ano po ba yung um <clears throat> ano po ba ang nakaka-advantage if they will upload this one, right? They, if they will upload this one, automatically po si B pinatay niya si A using the same firearm, si C pinata uh, si C pinatay din ni B, si D pinatay din ni B, and si B na huli sa checkpoint having this unlicensed firearm. So, dinakip si B. Ang kaso ni B is illegal possession of unlicensed firearm because as far as we know, a mere possession of this unlicensed firearm will constitute to the crime of illegal possession. Right? Yes. Ano po ba ang meron pa? If after this illegal possession of firearms, isasubmit yung firearms mo papunta sa our local crime laboratory office. And automatically, after the examination, this local crime laboratory office will upload after the process capture, they will upload the process image to the IBIS for cross-matching. And what happened if A, the, the murder of A, the murder of B, the murder of D, um, I mean the murder of C and D, hits or shall we say link to the certain firearm, pwede pong gamitin to na ibilinsya na ito para din po kasuhan si B gamit kasuhan si B sa pagpatay sa sa kaso sa pagpatay ni A, C and ni D. Right? Okay. So, forward po tayo. Refers to something that concealed or hidden, okay? Nasa police intel po ito. It automatically convert po siya. Right? Okay. So, is po yung pinaka-common natin or sa, sabihin na natin Almost all criminology students are, are, are asking these issues or asking this question. Is criminology an art or a science? Ito yun, di ba? Mostly, okay? So, sasagutin natin yan. First, we should first define what is criminology. Napakarami pong definition ng criminology dito. Iisa-isahin ko po sila ng pagbasa and automatically will explain it later. Right? Okay. So, definition of criminology. First is, Definition by Kalalang in his book in year 2011. 
Criminology was derived from the Greek word krimen, which means action, and Greek word logia, eulogia, for logic or study, which means social science approach to the study of crime as an individual and social phenomenon. Okay, that's the first definition. The second definition that we had, criminology is a body of knowledge regarding crime as a social phenomenon. It includes within its scope the process of making the laws, the breaking of laws, the reacting towards the breaking of laws. So yan po yun according to Sutherland and ni Donald Chris in year 1960s. So napakatagal na po yan. Followed here is we have here is Hagan. Define criminology as a science, a discipline that studies crime and criminal behavior. Right? Okay. For Tradio, Criminology as a body of knowledge regarding delinquency and crime as a social phenomenon. So, yun po yung mga definition natin. Meron pa ba? Okay, nandito si Steele. Stated that criminology is a scientific study of the, nat of the nature, extinct cause, and control of criminal behavior. Okay. So, nakikita po ninyo sa ating tinatawag po na criminology. To answer those, Chris, criminology as science, we have here. Criminology, according to Pickley and Eduardo in their book in the year 2010, criminology cannot be considered a science by itself because ano po ba ang kadahilanan na kaya hindi nila kanya consider na science and criminology? Kasi it doesn't have or it doesn't have yet acquired universal validity. Wala pong universal validity and acceptance po ang criminology. Kasi yung acceptance po ng criminology, it depends with what country, it depends into where, into when. Right? So wala siyang universal acceptance, right? Criminology is not stable and it varies from one time and place to another. So, yun po yung sinabi ko. Hindi siya stable eh. Magdidepende siya sa country, magdidepende siya sa anong panahon, magdidepende siya kung kailan. Right? Kasi, criminology on the other hand, criminology is a science. Pwede po, provided that it is a science under the following nature. First, apat po sila. First is, it is an applied science. Pangalawa, social science. Pangatlo, dynamic. And pangapat po is nationalist. Ano, unahin po natin yung una. It is an applied science. It is an applied science because criminology are borrowing studies or sciences. And they apply the sciences into our study, into our study in criminology. No bang mayroon dyan? First, ballistics. Sabihin natin ballistics. Ang ballistics po ba, atin po ba talaga yan? Technically po, those ballistics or the study, kasi ballistics po, you will define ballistics as science that deals with the study of motion of projectile and other factors affecting its motion. If you have this one, wala pong, hindi po talaga yan sa criminology eh. Kasi ballistics is just other branch of the P6, uh, P P6 po na nangyayari. We just copied the study in ballistics and then we just apply this study in ballistics into our far, uh, into, uh, into firearms identification. Kaya nga, meron tayong forensic ballistic. Right? Okay. Mayroon tayong firearms examination. Yun po yun. Followed also, ano pa? Poroscopy, the force, the study of the force. Hindi din po sa atin yan. We are just copying that. Ano pa? Um, P6? Yes po. The study of chemistry. Yes, hindi din po sa atin yan. We are just copying chemistry from its main science. And then we apply the study of this chemistry into the study of criminology. And that's what makes us an applied science. Right? For number two, criminology is a science because it is a social science. Yes, social science po ang criminology. Kailan po ba naging social science and criminology? First, remember, social in social science, crime is a problem in a society. Every society, may problema po talaga ng crime because crime or crime is a social phenomenon, right? Hindi po talaga pwede nating pigilan ang crime, right? So crime is there, they should exist. And that's a problem with our society. Crime is a social phenomenon. Crime is a problem in the society. And we study crime. That would make us social science. Right? 
that what makes criminology, the study of criminology, a social science. Right? For number three, dynamic. Bakit po naging dynamic yung criminology? First, remember, criminology is dynamic because as the society changes, criminology changes. Yes, remember po, yung criminology in the year 1990s or 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and in this 2000s, labi na po, nasa 2020 na tayo, in the next year, 2021, may mga, ang criminology po noon, is hindi po same ngayon. Right? Kasi yung criminology noong unang kapanahonan, may mga batas po na hindi pa batas sa kapanahonan nila. There are some acts of that of their time or in their era which are considered action but never defined as crime. We have here are some actions which are already defined as a crime. No ba yon? Sabihin natin, cyber crime. Yon po yon, cyber crime talaga kasi nasa digital age tayo. Cyber crime by itself. Kung okay, kung titingnan natin for cyber crime, first ano ba talaga? So 1990s may cyber crime na ba? Wala pa, right? Kasi Limited lang ang tao na may internet. Pero kaya na bang may, um, sa, may actions na ba na pwedeng, pwedeng makonsider as cybercrime during this time? Yes, meron na, right? But limited pa ang tao na may internet connection po, right? Okay. Along with this is, as to this present time, may cybercrime na po, right? So, iba na po ang criminology nun at criminology yun, right? Because this time, we'll study cybercrime. And automatically, if isa na po niyan is yung mga first year natin, iba pong curriculum nila compare with the other criminology graduates natin. Kasi so, this first year natin, mayroon na silang introduction to cybercrime investigation. Ano, napakarami na nila yan. They will have with them other pa ng mga subjects na hindi na take, uh, na take up naman, pero hindi talaga nagiging na, nagkaroon ng toro discussion sa kanilang sa kanilang college life, yung mga pre-graduate natin ng mga criminology. Right? Okay, example that is the police comparative system, right? The police comparative system po na ginagawit natin or sa kumpa, ka, uh, yes, the comparative po na subject natin. In the year 2010 or 2011, wala pa pong comparative, right? But in the year 2012 or 2013, may comparative na po, right? Police comparative. And we should know, police comparative is as um, a subject that discuss different police system or policing system in other countries in different countries right you are, you are comparing those those police practices their best practices and their worst practices in the application or for us to have much better administration in our police uh, in our police system in our country right so that's dynamic followed here is nationalistic nationalistic po kasi Iba po ang criminology because criminology will just adapt to what is mandated in the country. Kasi criminology po is a regulated, government regulated po siya. Kasi we are studying laws. And our application of criminology, our study of criminology must depend on what country or what are the laws existing in this country. Hindi po pwedeng yung criminology sa Amerika, dadalhin mo talaga yung 100% content ng criminology sa Amerika papunta dito sa Pilipinas. And you cannot even bring the 100% content of the criminology in the Philippines into other countries kasi may mga kaibahan po talaga. Dito sa Pilipinas po, napakatalino po ng mga criminologists natin dito. Okay? We study law, we study law enforcement, we study investigation, we study forensic sciences, we study criminal sociology, and we study correctional administration. Napaka, napaka, napakatalino po ng mga criminologists natin. Which in other countries, their criminology focus only into the study of criminal, uh, criminal uh, sociology lang po. Okay? So, I have here is a book, the book titled Principles of Criminology by Edwin H. Sutherland and Donald Tracy. Okay, these are all American authors, and they stated that criminology at present is clearly not a science. Hindi po siya science. Nevertheless, it has hope of becoming a science. Gusto niyang maging science. Pero hindi niya po, hindi, hindi, hindi talaga siya, hindi, 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 hindi
criminology is not a science by itself, right? So, sir, art ba po siya? Hindi din. Kasi art is what we say, ang art, those are criminal investigation natin. Criminal investigation is an art, right? Criminology is not a science and at the same time is not an art. Okay? Let's see each other and see each other. Good day and bye-bye.